we had been trying and didn't happen. And I thought, oh gosh, I started this new job. There's, you know, we need to put pause on that, which I really couldn't afford to do at my age. Lo and behold, I was pregnant. And my boss at the time, a female, um, her first reaction wasn't, oh, congratulations. It was, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then oh, <laughs> about, yeah, <laughs> oh crap. And then two minutes later, oh, congratulations. You know, it was like the afterthought. Welcome to The Defense Never Rests with Morgan and Akins, your monthly dose of uncommon sense about all things legal and some that are not. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Defense Never Rests. I'm your host, Megan Henry. And tonight we have on some reoccurring guests. Um, we have on Carly, Jamie, and Helen, who I had on a few weeks ago um, to talk about gender bias. And we decided to have another episode that we're talking about, you know, being working mothers in busy careers and not only how to balance that, but also how, you know, to get more mindfulness in our days and, you know, make, just make it all work um, to the best of our abilities. So, you know, I love these women. They're awesome to talk to. So with that, let me bring them in. Hi, ladies. Good evening. Welcome again for joining me tonight on the Defense of Rest. I'm so happy to have you all back on. Yay. Yeah, Hi. I've been looking Thanks. forward to it since part one. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Well, yeah. And, and we've improved, I think, our, our circumstances a little bit. We all decided we were going to bring a beverage this time and have, you know, a, an adult <laughs> chat <laughs> about a lot of things. I mean, last time we had talked about gender bias and diversity in the workplace. And we, we were during that conversation, I feel like we came up with so many other topics. So tonight, our focus is really going to be on another type of bias that, you know, moms tend to have in the workplace, but also I want to touch on how we can try to strike a balance and be sane uh, while we're, you know, trying to juggle so many things that we all juggle every day. Um, So, you know, I, I, I kind of want to dive right into our own personal experiences because I think everyone has like a widely mm-hmm. different experience when they, you know, really dive into motherhood and juggling a career at the same time. Um, so I, I'm going to start with you, you Jamie. I think I think you might have the youngest child. At, I think out of the group. I'm not sure. Just turned four. So yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so I think you might. So you know you you know, you have a four-year-old and I, I, if I remember correctly, you, you had her while you, you know, you you work at a firm, you still work at a Mm -hmm. firm. So how was that experience for you being like a, you know, an established full-time working in attorney and, um, having your first kid? Well, you know, it was a, um, I would say the strange set of experiences for me because I, um, I dealt with infertility for years leading up to that. And, um, and then I, made the switch that the start of that year, um, to go from the public sector into the private sector and, um, thought, well, I, you know, I haven't gotten pregnant by this point in time. I don't have to worry about it for a while. And three months later, <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, I'm what, <laughs> um, was the reaction. So I was definitely dealing with this situation of being new to the firm, new to the state, new to the area. Um, and, um, and new to parenthood all at the same time, um, trying to figure out kind of how to navigate that, that world to ensure that, you know, yes, I'm, I have obviously went back to work because I'm still there and still very happily gainfully employed there. Um, but was not expecting to deal with, you know, trying to, I think there was almost a sense of prove myself, if you will, as a, a good investment um, uh, as someone who was newly brought on board and surprised we need to take some time um, to go into parenthood. Um, and so I think I, I probably did things that I, I look back and say that um, I'm not quite sure if I would have handled it the same way yeah. um, as I did. Um, I waited w- a really long time to tell anyone that I was pregnant. Um, and, and I think that part of that was just that sense of insecurity. Maybe it was a false sense. I, I don't know. Um, but I would hope that the 
work environment that I'm in now. And I hope this for other, you know, first time parents as well, that they feel comfortable enough to make the decision to share their good news with their colleagues as early as they want to, or as late as they want to, you know, I think it's just that um, having a, a good trusting environment with your colleagues and, and um, partners and, and the attorneys that you work for to know that they're ha- you know, happy for you and going to be supportive of you throughout that whole process. Um, yeah. I mean, that your, your story can really resonates with me because I think I was in a very similar boat. I was at a new firm for me mm-hmm. And I, I don't know, I, I waited obscenely long to the point that my husband's like, you're kind, I need to tell them <laughs> like they're going to ask questions, but being yeah. really nervous about, you know, the ripple effect that would have mm-hmm. on my place there. And, and I believe we touched on this during the last podcast, like the, you know, the assumption, you know, well, are you going to come back to work or, are you, mm-hmm. you know, is this, and you know, I think Helen, you had that exact yeah. experience, <laughs> right? I, I think I'm the only in-house lawyer Mm -hmm. on today. Um, But it makes me kind of sad that to hear, you know, that you had the same experience. um, Because I too had just started a new job. And um, I had dealt with infertility issues. And I'm an older mom. I'm, you know, what do they call that now? Um, um, Octogenarian mom. (laughs) Not that old conversation <laughs> with a uh, yeah, 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 on you know, LinkedIn about geriatric. Yeah. Geriatric. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't, you know, um, and when I started the new job, um, we had been trying and didn't happen. And I thought, oh gosh, I started this new job. There's, you know, we need to put pause on that, which I really couldn't afford to do at my age. And then, you know, lo, lo and behold, I was pregnant and, it was, you know, like everybody said, congratulations. My boss at the time, a female, um, her first reaction wasn't, oh, congratulations. It was, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then oh, about, yeah, <laughs> oh, crap. And then two minutes later, oh, congratulations. You know, it was like the afterthought. Mm. So, um, yeah, it, it makes me sad that we had to like wait to tell, I mean, I waited the full first trimester to say anything because I've had issues before, but um, it's sad that we have to kind of put that into consideration um, in revealing that, so. Yeah. I think I was almost five months pregnant before I said anything at work. Oh, wow. Really long, like. I was too. (laughs) It was a really cold winter. I took full (laughs) advantage of ponchos and all sorts of those things. And in the spring, I was like, oh, A-line dresses. I don't know what these are, but let's start wearing them. Yeah, I waited a long time. Um, So Carly, how about you? So I think that, um, I think it's just really important when you're planning a family planning to have a family or, or you're pregnant is to come up with some sort of plan to the extent that you can. Um, and by plan, I mean, so I was a full-time litigation attorney. Um, you know, you are on many court dockets and court deadlines. And then when you have a child, they're very demanding as well. So I knew that in my mind, something had to give a little bit. I didn't feel like I could keep up with both. And it's not to say that you have to give up one or the other, but I came up with a plan, something that would work best for me. And it's not going to be for everybody, but, um, I was able to work remotely. So I've been working from my home office for 10 years now, um, Mm -hmm. way, way, way before COVID. And it's something that really allowed me to balance both. And I don't think that without it, I don't think that I would have been able to do both, at least to the extent that I was able to, um, And again, I know it's not for everybody. Um, Some people need to be in that work environment, but for me, it allowed me pockets of time to do the extra things that I needed to do. Right. So instead of taking a break from my work and walking down the hall at the office to chit chat, which by the way, is very necessary to your day, I -hmm. could do some laundry or I could do the dishes. So it just, like I said, it allowed me a pocket of time um, to be able to do more. So planning to the extent that you're able to, I think is really important. And also expressing, you know, if you work for a big firm, expressing your needs, um, and staying firm with that, you know, these are my needs. This is what I'm going to need to be able to do in order to balance this. I I think is really important. 
Yeah. And I, I admire that you were able to plan that out up front and like understand and map out your own needs. I think I was in like a panic stage being like, oh shit. Like, how am I going to do all this without anyone realizing that I'm right. like juggling it? And at that time, at least for me at the time, working from home wasn't an option. So I, I did it secretly. You know, I would have, I would have a deposition. I just wouldn't come back to the office. Or if I had a deposition outside the office, I just would never go in that day or, and I just didn't ask. And I, then I think I just started working from home on Fridays and just didn't tell anybody and no one asked any questions. So I just kept doing it, but that worked for me in the place I was at that time. Right. Um, but I was very thankful when I moved to where I am now that, you know, work in the home, work at home, work in the office, work in the park, work wherever you want, just get, you know, do what you need to do to get your stuff done. That worked much better. Um, but at the time that I had to use a different system. So that that's great that you were able to like recognize it and like propose it early on. Yeah. And I'm hoping that it's becoming more available to people yeah. who need it because of the pandemic, you know, firms see that it's, um, you know, accessible and that they can make it work and, you know, hopefully it works out for, for more people. Now, um, I'm going to circle back with, with Jamie on this one too. <laughs> like how, how was your firm or how was your experience at your firm with, you know, your maternity leave and your time off? Because I know this was an issue with me. Uh, my yeah. firm that was at was like, we don't have one of those policies. Like <laughs> it was like a new thing to them. So I'm yeah. curious what yours, your experience was. Yeah, that was the interesting part for me. So <laughs> when I was interviewing with the firm, thinking that I was not going to need it anytime soon, I, I kind of, and I was, um, I was recruited. So I, at the time I felt a little bit of flexibility or, yeah. or, um, confidence, I guess it will, asking about things I don't think I otherwise would have, um, one of them being maternity leave policies. Um, so I got a commitment from them of six weeks leave um, that would be paid at the time, and, and lo and behold, I needed it. And I, I was able to tack on the rest of my kind of vacation time for the year um, that I hadn't used up until that point. So I, I think I had something like eight weeks um, off. Um, the thing that I, I think I'm, I don't want to say most proud of, but one of the things I'm really proud of at the firm after that experience, obviously, is, you know, I, I became really um, passionate about advocating for longer parental leave, um, particularly among firms and emphasis on the parental part of the parental leave, not just maternity. Um, so an opportunity came up. Um, one of the partners let me know that the firm was going to be reevaluating its leave policies and you know, what did I get? And so I told them and I took it as a chance to advocate for what I thought would be um, better. So the, the firm now has a 12 week parental leave policy fully paid and you can take that your know, birth or adoption or surrogacy anytime in the first year. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be consecutive. It doesn't have to That's be right awesome. away. It can be anytime in the first year. So I, you know, I was really pleased that they, they made that and there was you know no gripes about it. They really moved to that policy. It was great. Yeah. That's really good. That's because- amazing. I yeah. had a similar as your, your policy was like six weeks. And then you just have a lot of stress at that point because you're like, like, oh, now I have it, it, just the financial aspect because yeah. you're like, okay, I know how to live, you know, without kids, <laughs> but now you need to start planning ahead. Like, okay, well then I'm not going to work. And if I'm not going to get paid for this amount of time, and then I need to pay for daycare and then, but you want to maximize the time that you're home. Mm-hmm. And it just was a lot of stress. I just remember being very stressed about the whole thing. Also, uh, and I didn't appreciate six weeks at the time. So like my, my past job in public, the public sector, it was 10 days. That was the leave policy when you pregnancy or adoption, but you got 10 days. And so I said 10 days to six weeks. This is great. Um, <laughs> until I became a mom and realized six weeks, like, it was not yeah, even yeah, remotely close to being. Enough. I think people forget that not a lot of daycares will even accept your infant yeah. at six weeks. I mean, I think that most of them are eight weeks or 10 weeks. So, mm-hmm. I mean, what are you supposed to do with this little baby who can't sit up or eat or, or sleep through know, the night? Do anything and that was before it. the pandemic when daycares like were still slightly more um, abundant in number. I don't know yeah. about the States that you're in, but in Maine, like our local Maine public radio did a whole series about the daycare crisis in the state in 2019. So before the pandemic even hit yeah. and the daycares have, so many of them have closed since then, just because they can't keep up with the cost of doing business now. It's really, it, it, I think 
you know, if we're talking about anything, just this, like the childcare crisis among professionals yeah. and making sure you have access to available, affordable, flexible enough childcare. Well, that's going to be episode three. It's <laughs> like a whole nother conversation for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot uh, to talk about on that. So H- Helen, how about you? Because I imagine corporate America is, a, I, I, at least in my eyes, I feel like they're much, they have more friendlier leave policies, but correct me, I might be totally wrong, but that's just my perception. Uh, yeah, I had six weeks too. Um, so no, they're not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this made me think back to my experience and just having started a new job and then you know, just uh, two, three months later, finding out that I'm pregnant, and then having to wait to announce that. um, And then being out all of that, I wonder how it affected my career at that Mm -hmm. place. Um, You know, it ended up not being a good cultural fit for me. But I do wonder if I'd had the time to establish myself a little bit more, a little bit better, a longer time, and not having all the pregnancy issues. And I had a difficult pregnancy. Um, For a time, I thought they might put me on bed rest for six weeks. It was terrible. And and then he came early, four weeks early. So it just was, you know, every everything in the book that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But then I think about how it may have affected my career. And, you know, I have no evidence (laughs) <laughs> on that. But I, I do think back and think, well, maybe things would have been different. Maybe if I had a, had a year at least to kind of establish myself and then to understand mm-hmm. my work ethic and not tainted by like being groggy and tired and hormonal and all those mm-hmm. things. Um, so maybe it would have been different. I don't know. Um, but that's certainly something that women have to deal with that men don't. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I mean, just dealing with pregnancy symptoms um in the workplace oh right yeah and any and even you know if you're nursing and having to you know Mm -hmm. juggle that and as well like i i remember personally going back and thinking like oh i have big windows i have no lock on my door like who's Mm -hmm. gonna barge in you know (laughs) while i have things hanging out like it's just like (laughs) it's not ideal (laughs) So, uh, so Carly, I think you probably have a very interesting perspective on this too, because as being an employment attorney and, you know, a mom, you must have, like, feel like you must have to counsel some of your, your clients too on their policies and, you know, what, what they have in place for leave and what they have in place when, you know, moms come back to work and things like that. Right. Well, you know, there is no federal paid leave. Um, there's yet. the FMLA yet, yet. right. Yet <laughs> we're, we're in the process of discussions. Um, but you know, under the FMLA, if you, if the employer has 50 or more employees, they are required to buy, to provide up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave. Some States have, um, paid leave statutes. Florida does not. So, um, Florida, you really get to do, you know, whatever you want to do as far as paid leave is concerned. Um, but it's, it's definitely a problem. It's an issue. This is part of the problem with female attorneys and, you know, leaving the workforce. Like I think that we probably touched on in the last episode. Um, it's a, it's a problem. Something needs to be done about it. Um, you know, we're, (laughs) we're having these kids. We're not, we're not doing it on our own. You know, we need (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> some, some support here. And like I mentioned, I mean, what you, you can't send them to daycare. I mean, there needs to be some, some sort of solution for sure. Um, we're getting there. We're making baby steps, but we're, we're definitely not there yet. But I think the, um, the lines of communication have definitely been open. I think that we are making some sort of progress in the right direction. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll get there soon. But my, as far as counseling, my clients, Um, I mean, they're mostly concerned with whether or not they're complying with the laws or not. And like I said, it's, if if they're under 50, they're fine. And there's no requirement for paid leave, um, in Florida. So. But Florida does have a parental continuance rule, um, that got adopted last year where you can, you know, if you are expecting a child, 
Um, you can continue all of your court dates and hearings and motion sessions and depositions and stuff. I think it's 12 weeks is Florida's rule now. Oh, did for attorneys? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I think that went into a, that got adopted last year. And oh, I didn't there's know that. kind of a growing list of states that have adopted official because, parental continuance rules. Yeah. Because there were so many attorneys who had to come to court mm-hmm. almost in labor, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. um, it's interesting because um, I mentioned to, to all you today that I recently did a similar podcast with mm-hmm. a, another attorney who was t- took the bar and I think she had like a three week old at home. And we talked a lot about like what, um, f- what they put in place to, for her because she was nursing too. And it was mm-hmm. like, the, she's like, I, I forget how much time she got, but it was a very little amount of time that she could use throughout the entire bar exam that she's like, okay, I had to put in this. I had to go to the bathroom. I had to pump. Then I had had this inspected. I had this inspected. And then I would go back and I was like, oh, like how do she you had do- to have her like items inspected to make sure she wasn't bringing any notes? Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. You know, I'm going to listen to this podcast episode, actually, because Mother's Esquire is pushing with the ABA for the pump up the bar campaign on trying to change that nationally. Um, I will, I'll let you know when yeah. it hasn't come out yet. Yes. Probably. This is, this is a, a, you know, a preview of what's to come. <laughs> but, I'll let you, yeah. but I mean, I, when she was explaining that to me, I, I just went back to, you know, going, taking the bar exam and being in that stressful mindset as own, on its own. Now she has a newborn at home. So she's not even able to like sleep and then to be during the test, then, you know, you, mm-hmm. you have to, she had to pump to, for her, for her baby and for herself. And then, so you have to break your concentration and then take all this time to, mm-hmm. you know, it, I just can't. And I think she had like extra time and things, but it's still very distracting for the process. Mm-hmm. I mean, good for her. This might be an unpopular opinion, but wouldn't you just reschedule the test for another time? I mean, wouldn't you just say like, this is just really bad timing. Like I'm just, I mean, I don't know. Good for her that she did it. Yeah. I might reschedule. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that goes, I think that goes back to something we were talking about before, just, you know, having the flexibility of choice for you. I think things like accommodations at the bar exam and law schools are, I mean, that's, necessary for entry into the profession, right? Because we have to get licensed in order to be attorneys. So I think those types of accommodations need to be available, but we also need to feel like we have the support to make whatever choice is right for us and for our families. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, that's the most important part. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's true. I'm just going to throw this up to all of you. So like, you know, what was your experience like then, you know, being a, a new, new parent? And now going back to work to ha- and now suddenly having to juggle your busy career with, you know, everything else that is going on at home and how busy, you know, that aspect is. And it's all new too. I mean, I know I struggled with it and it was just like, I mean, I still struggle with it. Like I, every day, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to do all this. So, you know, what was your experience? Um, so for me, <laughs> um, I, it, it was not a good experience. Um, and I ultimately ended up leaving that job mm-hmm. um, just because of the stresses I experienced when I re- returned. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was trying to, you know, compensate by putting in more hours and FaceTime and, and it's it, like working from home was not a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would, go in early, stay late. And my child was three months old and I would get home and he would already be asleep at mm-hmm. seven thirty, eight o'clock. And, mm-hmm. you know, you get one, two hours with the newborn like that. Um, and so I, I ended up exiting that position um, because I thought, you know, it, t- it was so hard t- to have this miracle baby for us. Mm-hmm. And this mm-hmm. is probably our one and only, I, you know, I'm going to miss all this time. So um, when I made that decision, I said, I'm going to take some time off and maybe just even do a part-time or contract work for a while mm-hmm. and then see how it goes after that. But I ended up finding it was a contract position, but it did turn into a permanent position that was so flexible. My GC was, you know, so accommodating and the stresses were very different. It was a job that when I left F5, 
for that whole first year, second year that I worked there, I don't think I ever checked my phone after I left the office. I mean, it was one of those things where I got my stuff done. You know, nothing I was doing was going to be on fire that night. You know, it can wait till the next day. Um, And that really helped my personal situation. I don't know that everybody gets that lucky, um, but, you know, if, if it's not the right situation for your life that it doesn't fit, then make something different. Yeah. Yeah. That was what I had to do. I I mean, and I think that's also just a very brave decision to make, you know, being like, okay, you know what, this just isn't working. And you need to put kind of your family first at, at some point and be like, I need to find something that works the best. And like, look how well it worked out for you too, even though it was probably scary at first. You oh know? yeah. Like, okay. Let's, let's leave this stable income and just find something yeah. that's a better fit. It was, <laughs> it was very scary. And, but the trade-off was worth it. Not just the time with my newborn, but releasing the daily stress, mm-hmm. you know, like every night going to bed with a pit in my stomach because, you know, it just wasn't going to be enough to catch up. Um, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So releasing that was the best thing. And it probably made you just a better mom too, when you're not that stressed. I mean, I notice even now, like it, you know, if I am stressed about work, it's so hard not to have that carry over as much as you mm-hmm. have that little person in the back of your head saying you need to leave it here. I, I don't, I, I, I have a really, I struggle with that. If I get an email like later and I, I, it's really family time and I get distracted and sometimes like that frustration you can, you carry over. It's really difficult. Right. And your kids can tell too. Yeah. Um, and then you snap at them and because you're stressed and then you feel guilty. So now you feel <laughs> even worse. <laughs> yeah. I what know. mom guilt? Really? <laughs> And it, it's it's the worst. Too. Jamie doesn't have that. <laughs> and I don't know if you you all agree, but it's the worst. I think when it happens like before the, they leave for the day, mm-hmm. because yes, yeah, because you can't like, apologize. They're gone. Yeah. yeah, like you don't have that calm bedtime part where you like can smooth everything over and like. But then they go to school and you're like, oh, do they not think I love them today? And then you worry, about, and they probably don't care. But like I worry about it all day. <laughs> Mom guilt. It's yeah, mom guilt. It's It's terrible. Real. The one I'm a person that like working on my boundaries is something that I I am working on, really working on it. Um, But the one that I I have been able to stick with mostly um, when and that I put in place when I first went back to work is um, from the moment my daughter wakes up in the morning or her like the time that I wake her up until nine, whatever, that's my, you know, workday start time. I don't work. So between seven 30 and nine, I'm not accessible. And between five and whenever I put her to bed, at just about eight o'clock, I'm not accessible. And I carved those out. I even put them on my calendar. It's like, I am not available during these hours. I'll work before I'll work after. I always work before I pretty much always work after. Um, (laughs) Let's be real. But it it made such a difference for me knowing that I, you know, to your point, Helen, we get such little time with them while they're awake during the work day. Um, And I don't have a long commute. um, Even when I go into the office, the the pandemic, I don't miss even that short one has made it possible for me to have like four hours a day with her instead of two or three. It, it, you know, it, it makes a difference in my day being able to just have that time, forget whatever else I need to do with it just have that time and being able to enforce that and know that I can enforce it and that it's going to be a respected boundary. You know, I think that's always the question, but it, it, it's, it was important to me to stick with it. Well, I appreciate you hanging out with us during that. You're, we're in your, we're we're imposing on your window right now. I'm breaking my own rule. But she has a drink. She has a drink. So that's okay. And if, and if your daughter comes on the podcast, that's okay too. Mine just walked in the door just now and didn't come in. So <laughs> can we talk about that enforcing the boundaries topic? I think yes. that's pretty important because of, you know, like the mom guilt and then enforcing the boundaries because it's so easy to get sucked in and the mission creep of once you say it's okay to call me while I'm on vacation, 
then it becomes okay. And then the next time it's easier and it's easier. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, you know, like how do you kind of enforce the boundary? Um, Mm -hmm. And then I want to share something that I learned from an amazing lady. She's an executive here in Dallas, Fort Worth area. And Mm -hmm. she was a keynote speaker on women, you know, to women's leadership. And she, um, the one thing that I took away from that great speech was um, the words immovable um, was the meet, not meeting. Um, it'll come to me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, and she used that. It's an immovable. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Help me, guys. Immovable <laughs> obligation. Obligation. Obligation yeah. is the word I was fine. Um, and and. You know, I think it becomes important as our kids get older because, you know, maybe, you know, that performance that my son has a performance tomorrow night, you know, and if something were to happen where I had to be doing something for work, I want to be able to say I have an immovable obligation. Um, But it's so hard, like if you have a board meeting and you have to be at a, you know, like you're going to really ask the board to move their meeting but she did it and they accommodated that. So I think it's possible. It's just so hard for Mm -hmm. us to say, this is my boundary. I don't know if you have, any of you have tips on enforcing that boundary. Well, I I knew for me that it was gonna be hard to do it. So I very deliberately have a work phone and a personal phone. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't get my work emails on my personal phone. It was a choice that I made pre-parenthood. Um, so now in, with the pandemic, like I leave my laptop in my office, I close my home office, I close the door and I take my work phone and I stick it in the middle of the kitchen Island. So like, I can't, it's not physically near me during those times that I am not accessible. Um, and, and it took that kind of extreme of a disengagement for me to stick with it. But that's, and I do that on the weekends from, you know, five o'clock Friday till about eight o'clock Sunday, my phone stays in the middle of the kitchen island. I might check an email during that time, but I, I typically don't respond to it during that period, unless it's like very clearly a rare tax emergency. They happen, but yeah. most of the time it can wait until the morning. Yeah. And I think that's the perspective, cha- the change of perspective I had, I think pre kids, I thought everything was so important and needed to get done at that very second or very soon thereafter. And now I've realized that there are some things that are emergencies that might Mm -hmm. need attention. Sure. Like maybe you get a new case and maybe there's an emergency filing, maybe there's something, but typically it can wait till the morning, typically. So I try to, I've tried to train myself be like, can this wait? And usually the answer is yes. Or does it require just a quick response? I see your email. I acknowledge the email. I'll look at this first thing in the morning or something to, to that effect. Because, you know, sometimes clients do want to know that you you see it or you've, you're have you not ignoring something that they think is an emergency and you just have to acknowledge it. I see it. I, I, I acknowledge it. I'm going to handle it. Um, but it definitely took, I think it 100% took me to be a parent to understand that, the, that not everything is an emergency. Right. The client might think it's an emergency, (laughs) um, but, you know, setting the boundaries are important. And a lot of times the clients have families and kids too, you know, and so hopefully that they'll understand. I always think back to the problem, the, the main issue that we might have is that everything's done very quickly through emails. Mm. Everybody has access to their email on their cell phone. So, um, my father is an attorney. And when I was younger, I used to go into his law firm and everything was done by fax. So things were just a lot slower than, I mean, you couldn't send an email and get an immediate response. It had to be faxed. And then if he wasn't in the office that day, it had to wait until the next day when you come in and you see the fax laying on the, on the fax machine, Mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I kind of think of that sometimes, like, you know, what if we were living in the eight, late eighties, if this was a fax, you know, I need to respond to it right then and there. The answer is typically no. Um, but also setting the, the times, Jamie, um, and it's almost like uh, scheduling them on your mm-hmm. calendar, just so you right. know that nothing's going to happen between those times. I mean, I refer to my calendar for everything. And if I see that I'm doing, you know, 
I don't actually do this, but you know, relaxing from eight to nine, <laughs> you know, that's what you're doing and nothing else takes place. Right. I, I actually challenge you to put that on like a calendar so everyone can see like Carly, like relaxing. relaxation. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> I circulate it. So my husband can see <laughs> this is my hallmark movie time. <laughs> Because we are approaching on Hallmark movie time season. So it has to be acknowledged. I mean, I have to do that for my, my exercises. You know, I work out every morning at not every morning. What am I talking about? Three days a week at five 30, you know, and I have to schedule it. I have to put it on the calendar else. It doesn't happen. So, you know, anything that you need to do, stick it on the calendar. Well, good for you for <laughs> sticking to five 30. I can't do the five 30. It's, it's tough, but I go to bed very early too. So once you get in that habit, you're good. Yeah. I, I don't have that. Just really do it five time. times. And then, you know, bit, but also the flip side to that is I can't sleep in past five 30 on a Saturday morning either, which mm. kind of stinks. So <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely I gave more of like working. a seven. Oh, go ahead. I'll say I'm, I'm usually up at five 30 with Carly and, and working, not working, not working. <laughs> um, talk about that for a minute, but, um, I, I finally, you know, it took, uh, the painful lesson of, um, my back going out before the pandemic and several times that year for me to remember, like, I have to actually exercise and take care of myself and stuff. So I, I, I do it while my, you know, in that time, my golden time with my daughter, I, I exercise right with her and half the time she's crawling all over me. I just, I, I used to think like, I couldn't do a good workout if I had kid and dogs and you really you can't, but whatever I do it now because I need to. <laughs> I do the but, same thing though. Cause a lot of times like yeah. they'll be on their iPad or sometimes I'll be like, Oh, you know, grab those little weights and do them with me. And like, I, I even though it's not like one-on-one, -on -one, like <laughs> I'm listening to you. I mean, like, I think it's still quality time. Cause also you're also mm -hmm. demonstrating like you, this is healthy important. habits. Yeah. yeah. But it yeah. is hilarious to watch kids do push-ups because they have no idea how to do them. It's <laughs> Like there's, well, so, there's no core strength they're just like they go all down and <laughs> you know i i'm i'm the client i mean you know you mm, guys are the yeah. the law firm lawyers and i'm the client and i i have those attorneys my outside counsel that say oh i'm in an rv um we're <laughs> we're we're driving but next stop i'll get that to you and i'm like no no <laughs> I didn't know you were, you know, in an RV on vacation. No. So if you, I mean, like you said, there are true emergencies, but it's, it is rare and they can wait. I mean, I know as outside counsel, you want to be responsive and that's something I look, you know, every in-house lawyer looks for in their outside counsel, but we're reasonable too. You know, like if you say, Hey, I'm going to be on vacation and let, let us know, I'm not going to expect you to be sending me an email from your RV <laughs> driving down the road. We want to work with you more often. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I have to say that that has to come with a slight caveat though, Helen, because if you, oh, if you, every time you call that attorney, mm -hmm. they have something, I feel like that mm -hmm. has to be a little bit of a red flag for you too. Like if you're like every time I, I call Joe, he's mm -hmm. on vacation or <laughs> I would think that's I, really no, but I've never had that experience with any of my attorneys. Like I, it's usually like, oh, you're going on vacation. What? You never <laughs> go on vacation. So um, I, I don't have that problem. I think most law firm lawyers are, are not like traipsing about on vacation. I know you have hours to bill, but that's never been an issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, and one thing that stands out to me too, when we talk about boundaries is I was recently at, um, my kids like field day at their school and their school's like right down the street. So I was like, okay, you know, it, I think it's wonderful that I could just pop over for field day. And while I was there, I noticed there's a bunch of other attorneys there and there's so many of the fathers who great. I'm glad that they're there, but they were on the phone the whole time. The whole time. Yeah. And I'm like, well, doesn't count. What's, what's the point? Of be, like, and like, do you think you look more important that you're on the phone? Like, I actually feel sorry for you and your kid. Cause you're not even enjoying mm -hmm. this experience of what is 45 minutes of your morning just to like watch your kid, you know, compete in field day. 
don't know, it made me sad a little bit too, because yeah. I, I, I don't, wouldn't want that multitasking approach to that. Like if you're going to be there, be there. And then yeah. you can deal with that phone call in 30 minutes when you're back home and at your desk. I think people are just a little bit addicted to their phones. I mean, they always feel like they have to be scrolling and looking. I mean, even sitting on the couch, watching TV, you can't do that and relax because you have to be watching TV and scrolling through your phone at the same time. And also this feeling that, um, the feeling of urgency, like everything has to be done right away immediately. I don't know when that happened other than the fact that cell phones allow when for it. Phone. So yeah. people just yeah. feel like it needs to be done. Blackberries. Remember blackberries, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm with keyboard. you, Jamie. Yeah. I, I have two phones and my work phone, um, stays in my home office when I'm done and I don't go back in here, <laughs> you know, when I'm done for the day. So, um, maybe on Sunday, I'll check it to see if there's like early morning meetings that popped up, you know, for Monday, but I, it's like, it's in a different room. I need to do a, uh, a better job of that with my personal phone. <laughs> so my husband and I <laughs> try to put it like in the, on the kitchen counter if we're sitting and watching TV so we can have, you know, conversation and be present with each other. Um, but it's so hard. It, it's yeah. really hard. It was a downside for parenting for me. We did a baby app, baby monitor app. And so up until I was <sighs> a parent, I would leave my phone down in the kitchen to like charge overnight. I had an actual alarm clock. And then we got the baby monitor app, which I thought this was great. I don't have to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on a baby monitor. Yeah. Well, now my phone's in my room with me every night. <laughs> yeah. Technology. Uh, so I, to your point though, Helen, I, on that urgency question though, I think that, I think that's a large part of it. This like culture of urgency and culture of hustle that has developed in the legal industry where it's almost like, you know, frowned upon to take time, you know, whether it's outside of normal business hours, weekends, you know, actually taking vacation right before the start of the call, we're talking about, you know, time off over the holidays and stuff. And, you know, how many of our, I don't know about you, but how many of your colleagues are like actually taking all of their vacation benefits every year? Right. Um, You know, I, I think that is something that would help families a lot um, and parents and professionals trying to, you know, achieve our professional goals, you know, because that's something that I think we all have is success, whatever that means to us and wanting to achieve it but also feeling like we have the support to do that and be sane people, you know, so like (laughs) taking that vacation time, we get it. So take it, you know, stuff like that. I, and I do feel like there's sometimes like a level of like guilt you almost feel Mm -hmm. for like taking that vacation. Like did I, I, at least maybe it's me, you know, sometimes when I'm taking vacation, I'm like, Oh, but you know, what am I going to miss? you know, or what, like, and really it's nothing. You're not going to miss anything. It's just a week or it might not even be a whole week. It might be a few days. Like I was on vacation last week for part of the week. I missed nothing. Like there was no emergency, (laughs) nothing burned down. Everything was fine while I was gone. I don't feel guilty. (laughs) Good. I still, I I don't feel a little guilty, but yeah, I didn't in the public sector. I take it, but I did it's a different, it feels different in the private sector versus the public sector for me. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. I think attorneys, especially attorneys that bill their time, um, if they're taking time off, they're not billing and then they don't feel productive. Um, they don't feel like they're generating money for the firm as they should be. But I think it's important to change the perspective because obviously time away, time to recharge, time to relax, be outdoors and do other things, you're going to end up being more productive in the long run, right? Um, We are not robots and machines. We do need a break. And when you take that time to just be, um, you know, take time to think, be creative, take time to rest, you come back ready to work harder than if you would have just dragged yourself through the entire time without a break, I find. Um, Yeah. I agree. Perfect segue um, (laughs) about nature because I have a book recommendation. I did not expect that. Yeah, (laughs) I was like, how can I segue this? Because I started a book. um, So happy to help. Talks about your book. No, it's not my book. I started reading reading a book 
Um, and I highly recommend it. I haven't completed it. It's written by a lady. Um, it's called The Nature Fix. And it talks about not only being in nature, making you just happier, but there's all these studies about mm. it making you smarter yes. and more creative. Mm. Um, so I highly recommend that. I, I, I just think it's fascinating. I saw a post on that somewhere on social media where it said you're supposed to spend a certain amount of days per month outside in a, in a wide open area, like a forest. Like in it got forest. very specific. Yes, yes in the forest. It talks about the scents of cypress. And I've, I've always like, liked diffusing scents, you know, mm. during sleep, you know, for relax aromatherapy or whatever. Um, I, I don't believe that essential oils cure everything, but I like how it smells. But it, <laughs> this book talks about scientific studies related to the smell of cypress and it boosting um, NK cells that helps your immunity. So, um, you know, just well, you, you have perfect. to like be in nature. Is- our office is closed tomorrow and I'm going hiking through a trail that has like a whole cypress yes. grove in it. I'm just going to like go sit and bring my blanket yes. <laughs> and tell the family, like, go hike. I need to, you know, ingest my cypress vibes here. Well, they have, they Take a picture that. and send it to yeah. us, Jamie. We will. Yeah. <laughs> well, also, in Japan, they call it forest bathing. bathing. Yeah. So, well, I also think we need to give Jamie a, a round of applause that your office is closed. You're not working. You're a billing attorney and you're not working. You're going for a hike. I think that's awesome. And you don't, because I know a lot of times on these national, like the federal holidays, you you still, like as a billing attorney, you still Mm -hmm. feel like, well, I mean, we're we're closed, but we're not closed, you know? So (laughs) good for you for, you know, being closed. I think you no yeah. comment on my colleagues, but yes. <laughs> well, no, I'm yeah, not talking about extra your points. I'm talking about you. <laughs> she gets extra points for not only being closed, but she's going on the hike and she's going to be in nature too. So yes. yeah, you're going to be, feel, you're going to tackle Friday. <laughs> it, you know, I don't, I haven't read the book, Helen, but it does. Um, I just, I love being outdoors. We we're avid hikers and there's something about the fresh air, you know, the mm-hmm. thing that I love, I'm up here in Maine. And the thing that I really love about the parts of Maine we go to is, you know, it's f- deep old forests right along the coast. Right. And it's that combination of like evergreen and salty sea. I, I can't get enough of it. And it's, it's my place to go and just let my brain recharge because it does like it just it, it you breathe deeper you your brain clears it's time to just like not think my we we hike in silence for hours like none of us want to talk to each other yeah. we just want to like be in the woods your kids except for my son <laughs> your kids do it are we done yet yeah, yeah. Uh, you drag yeah, him we've, along. we've brought our daughter hiking from like day one we were we have two we don't hunt but we have two hunting dogs and they'll go batshit crazy if you don't. So, you know, she's, that's what she's known, yeah. but it yeah. makes such a difference, such mm-hmm. a difference. Yeah. I, I would say my, my girls are kind of like your son, Helen, that they're like, Ugh. like, are we done walking? I'm like, but it's so nice and quiet, like smell mm-hmm. the air. And they, they are like, Argh. like there's like, can I, can I have my iPad please? <laughs> like, uh, branch like brushed up against my arm. Yeah. Can I play Roblox? <laughs> Mine is very, he loves hiking and because we dra- we've been dragging him hiking his whole life. Um, and he's very excited about starting the hike, but any hike that's more than like an hour, it's like just, you know, mm. I'm dying here. <laughs> yeah. Gotta drag him. <laughs> and I think I use the term hike in my family very loosely. It's more of like a walk on a path in the woods that doesn't really have any, any strenuous act, a part to it. Like you're just walking. It, it's mm-hmm. clearly defined. <laughs> That's a hike. I That's know. a hike. <laughs> In the woods it counts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Carly, other than fitting in your, you know, your early AM workout, is that your, like your daily mindfulness activity or do you have other, other things that you use? Uh, no, that's about it. And that really does it for me because it's a very strenuous exercise and 
I've got nothing left after that, but it's good. You know, um, it's good for your body, but it's good for your mind too. I mean, I feel like I have a, a lot less, you know, fight in me to, to argue with my kids. So <laughs> it mm. works out well. <laughs> Yeah. I'm kind of um, the same as you. I try to fit in like the, I try to th- work out for me and then I try not to like check my phone or check my email during, cause that's a, that's still always a problem. Right. And I try to put it to the, and I, I the, always, the instructors telling me that I shouldn't be doing that helps. Too. <laughs> yeah. But I like going to the beach too. You know, we're mm-hmm. in Florida and we're very, very close to the beach. Um, I find that it's similar to, you know, the big open space of the woods or the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, you get the negative ions from the ocean and that makes you happy too yes okay any like waterfalls ocean Mm. you know running water you get negative ions i'm gonna have to read this book (laughs) good to know know. (laughs) (laughs) i know this this book sounds like a big answer so (laughs) well that doesn't come from the book but um i you know read that somewhere else once and you really do feel like you get kind of a rush if you stand next to a waterfall. Mm. <laughs> I'm not a guru. <laughs> I sound like a nature freak. <laughs> so one thing I wanted to touch on though, um, you know, in this, in our discussion, kind of talking about balance and mindfulness and things is like outsourcing. Um, mm. Cause it's something that definitely comes up a lot. I, I feel like as, you know, what, what is ben- beneficial to outsource? Um, like, I mean, I talk about a lot with my friends, like, you know, getting your house clean to me, if you have the means to outsource it, that's a hundred percent something that's worth your time. <laughs> like I, I, so what other things do you guys outsource that you would recommend that helps you kind of keep your lives in order? I don't do this, but I have heard that the meal prep delivery, the food, you know, delivery companies are amazing. Um, because, you know, obviously it's less grocery shopping that you have to do. It is ready. You don't have to spend the time cooking. It's healthy. So you don't have to worry about that. So that's one. Um, and also another one that I don't do, but I heard is amazing is laundry service. I have a, Mm. a couple of friends that do that and they swear by it. And apparently they pick it up, they clean it, and they deliver it folded. I mean, the only thing they don't do is place it in the drawer for you, but I guess at that point you could do that yourself. I mean, the folding is the worst part, right? Like I have like probably six baskets upstairs that are just calling my name and I ignore them. (laughs) We did a nanny share for years with my daughter. Um, and the one thing I had the nanny do was wash and put away her laundry. And it's just one load a week, but man, it made a huge difference. And so she started preschool at the start of the year and I don't have my nanny share anymore. So I'm like trying to keep, I, I, I'm tempted by this laundry service. Yes. She said to me a couple of weeks ago, mama, you need to get better at doing the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> like, you need to learn how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> really, <laughs> I'll get you a stool and I yeah. will teach you how to fold. Let's learn. Let's learn this. <laughs> um, but I, you know, to, I second the house cleaning. It took me years to get around to that. because It was like a point of pride, right? Like I know how to clean my house. I can keep it clean. I don't need someone else to do that. God, it's worth the money. Pay someone I, I went the other way on the house cleaning. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. So our nanny the house. You? No, our, na- <laughs> our nanny would clean the house. And then after he got older, we didn't anymore um and then I would still have her come and clean um periodically but I had to clean before she came to clean and I mm. couldn't stop doing that and it was like so stressful so I was like mm, I yeah I I'm gonna I'm gonna quit that which I for the past year I've been saying no I'm gonna get her back but I, I still haven't done it because I'm too embarrassed I'm like I have to get this cleaned <laughs> before she comes um, which is, it doesn't make sense, but yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, we I know. have that argument in my house too. My husband does not. He's like, why do you have to clean for the cleaning people? I'm like, well, I mean, their job they'll is not- see that you have a dirty house. Well, they already know that, <laughs> but like they can't, they can't clean it if they can't get to the dirt because there's other stuff yeah. blocking their way. <laughs> you don't want them yeah. picking up, right? You want them cleaning. Right. Well, that's um, true. That's so true. You that's have to or- organize it. Yeah. The tidy up before the cleanup. Although so I-, I started a new thing with my son that you might like. 
Mm -hmm. um, because he, I have one boy, he's 10. He has stuff all over the house. Every inch, if there's a, a, a flat space, that's his. Whatever <laughs> it is, Legos, stickers, whatever. <laughs> so we started this thing where I have a little basket. Um, every night I go around and I put, I pick up all the stuff and stick it in the basket. And he has 24 hours to put it in its place or that whole thing goes in the trash. <gasps> Ooh, I, I love freaked it. freaked him a, out. Yeah. I love it. it. It's a chuck it bucket. Yeah. That's, and yeah. It, it's not gone and emptied. It's, it's, it's out. I and love so, it. Yeah. I, so. I had to go so far as to actually throw uh, my son's something like I did something similar and I had to, he, he didn't believe me that I was going to throw uh -huh. it out. So I had to actually like do it in front of him yeah. and show him that I was throwing everything. And I threw it in the trash can. Now it was a clean trash can and it was a clean bag and nothing else was in there. Like I could very easily like grab it out after the fact, but after that, mm -hmm. never again, because he saw you have to commit, you have to yes. commit to and it. follow through, to follow through. Yes. 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 <laughs> this is going to be a, a 2022 plan. I think. Yeah. It's stealing amazing. that idea. I highly <laughs> recommend it. We used to do this when they were younger. Be like, if it's on the floor, it's out the door. But nothing ever went out the door. It was just a cute thing we would say, and the kids would like scream and run around, like ah, oh, like. <laughs> <laughs> but now that they're older, they're like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> it's, nothing's going out the door. I need to do Go it with the, it. those boxes that are housing my daughter's zoo in the basement. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I think that's a great, really good piece of advice. So that I, I'm gonna, I'm taken for myself. Chuck it bucket. Um, I even like the name that you came up with. It's very catchy. Chuck it bucket. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use that one. <laughs> um, so we're we're just about out of time, but you know, I would love to hear you know some uh, some advice that you might have for either new or seasoned you know mothers. And it, attorneys and not attorneys, I don't care. Anyone working, you know, a, any advice that you might have to like attain a better balance? Because I know the work-life balance is not a thing. We all know it's not a thing, but we all want to be closer to that sanity of maybe feeling like we might achieve it. Um, so any advice that you, you might want to share, I would love to hear it. And I'll start with you first, Carly. My best piece of advice would be to speak up and ask for what you think that you need and don't be afraid to do it. You know, don't fill your mind with, well, what if this, what if that, what will so-and-so think of me? Um, because at the end of the day, if you're stressed, your kids are going to be stressed and everybody is going to be miserable. So the best thing that you can do, if you can identify something that would be helpful to you, um, and create that better balance is to identify it and speak up and ask for it and, and not feel bad about it. That's, that's yeah. really good advice. Hard, <laughs> hard in execution, really good advice, but, and, and yeah. you did it, you did it early on, you know, when you, you spoke up for what you needed to make everything work for, for you when you, you know, first had. Right. I mean, I, I think if you look at it this way, if you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family, um, it's, it's just some, something that's gotta be done. Mm. How about you, Jamie? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as Carly, you know, having the confidence to ask, um, you know, well, I, I, it's interesting. We're talking about this today. Um, I shared on my, my LinkedIn post of the day about a video that I saw last week. Um, and it had this question in there that really stuck with me kind of to this point, um, where instead of trying to think about like how to manage it, you know, being in an environment where, um, you have the confidence to say what support you need and that your employers are asking what support can we give you? Um, or your colleagues are asking what support can we give you to reach your goals? Um, and I think it starts in some ways as having the confidence to advocate for yourself for, you know, whether it is, you know, working remotely as we all are now and staying in that way or scheduling yourself for specific hours that you're not available or, you know, even scheduling, you know, if you're a nursing mom, schedule it right in your, your day that like your pumping times, those are not available to be, you know, stuff like that. I think it's, it's just, um, I didn't have that confidence for myself when I was a new mom and I 
I'm passionate about having the confidence for others now because I find that it's contagious, right? If, if you see someone else having the confidence to do that, then it it's, makes it easier to stand up and advocate for yourself that way. I, and I, I that's a, such a great point. It's definitely something I struggle with too, with the idea of like telling somebody what I need. I'm like, well, you should just know. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's no, mm. not a, you can't assume yeah. that if they know, someone knows what you need. You have to, you know, speak it <laughs> how about you and that could be time away but that could be a, like a mentor yeah. or someone else like you know yeah. asking for mm-hmm. stuff like that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I, I think for me it's a combination of both of those and I, I would say whether it's a work day or a weekend or in the evening um, maybe it's not going to happen every day I know it doesn't happen for me every single day but try to have just one hour for just yourself. And if it's working out and just that hour, you're, it's just about you um, or watching a trashy TV show, you know, um, what I tried to do before we worked remotely in COVID was I always blocked off my lunch hour and mm. I was mostly successful in not having meetings scheduled during the lunch hour. And I tried to get up from my desk and, uh, you know, go out or just not be eating at my desk. It's been different now that we've been working remotely, like every hour of the workday is filled, um, whether there's it's lunchtime or whatever, because everybody's somewhere else and it doesn't matter. Um, And so that's been harder But if I do get that one sliver, whether it's 30 minutes or an hour in the middle of the day, I try to just leave um, and do something else. So um, I I think that helps to kind of keep you sane because we all will sit there and we haven't gotten up for five hours. Mm. You know, you go from call to call to call to call um, and you realize, oh my gosh, you blink and it's been five or six hours already. So Um, If you get the chance, take it and don't feel guilty about it because, you know, nobody's going to know and nobody's going to (laughs) care. So just do it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I, I remember when, during, when my kids were remote, what I tried to do, and it's not exactly the same, but I would, they would have a break from their day. And I would say, you know, during your, your break, we're going to go for a walk and we would just go for a 30 minute however long their break was walk around the neighborhood. And I think it was just good for everyone. It was good for them to get away from their computers. And because all they wanted to do during their break is go on Roblox or something, just (laughs) look at another screen, but good for me too. Cause I'm like, you know what? They probably aren't going to be learning, thankfully learning from home (laughs) forever, but let's take advantage of this opportunity we have right now to do something else. And like, as you were saying, Helen, we're not in the middle of the woods, but at least we're getting fresh air and it's you know, clearing your head a little bit and um, getting away from the electronics just for a little bit. So, well, thank you guys so much for for joining me tonight. Jamie, thanks for taking the time away from your blocked out time. (laughs) Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. I'm almost empty, guys. I have enough for a a proper cheer. Jamie needs a refill. (laughs) I also also think I have that same same exact glasses that you do, Jamie. (laughs) Yeah, I can't see without them. That's my... My no, I mean, you're drinking glasses. I think. Oh, I the, the same, yeah. <laughs> like I thought you were talking about these. And I was just like, if I took them off, I'd be like this on the yeah. <laughs> I think Those are like crate and barrel. Yep. Crate and barrel circled like 2009. Yep. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was good. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Spot on. 